Over the last 100 years, the Yale School of Public Health has become one of the top academic institutions of its kind in the world, providing the essential leadership to protect and improve public health locally, nationally, and globally. Through groundbreaking research, policy analysis, education and training across its graduate and professional programs, the school serves diverse communities with its knowledge and expertise. We have a theme for the centennial. It's called Innovation Through Collaboration. And I think we're at a very vibrant point in our history where we're very innovative. And we're collaborating with a diverse group of uh, scientists and community members, and we're uh, booming really in terms of science and the kind of influence we're having on health throughout the world. Our mission began in 1915, when public health was still in its infancy. Charles Edward Amory Winslow, a bacteriologist by training, launched public health at Yale. And over the course of the following decades, the school and its scientific reach grew under Winslow's inspired leadership, making enormous contributions that enhanced and promoted public health. Winslow certainly ought to be considered one of the fathers of public health. The thing Winslow did was to accept the notion that if one is to be educated in anything, one must understand and one must be curious and one must seek the opportunities to collaborate. In the Yale School of Public Health's early days, there were many other pioneers who followed in Winslow's footsteps. Dorothy Horstman is a major figure, not just at Yale, but in medicine period. After all, I think she's probably the first woman who achieves tenure in a full professorship here at Yale. She is recognized by the National Institutes of Health. She was on committees that established research programs. So Dorothy would be a favorite of mine. Another was Wilbur Downs, a renowned globetrotter. He was known to counsel students to get outside the classroom and away from home and travel to wherever pressing public health and medical problems existed. He became the inspiration for the Downs International Health Student Fellowship. And since 1966, scores of Yale students have traveled the world to conduct challenging and innovative research projects. The school's 100-year history has also been marked by numerous other renowned faculty. These were committed scientists who worked to improve basic sanitation, eradicate polio, understand the transmission of insect-borne diseases, and implement a needle exchange program in New Haven to combat HIV AIDS. This effort was augmented in 1997, when Michael Merson, who became the school's first official dean, founded CIRA, the Center for Interdisciplinary Research on AIDS at Yale. The organization remains vibrant and active today, continuing its tradition of innovative research to slow the spread of the HIV AIDS epidemic. Others work to improve the health of senior citizens, enhance healthcare management and procedures, improve birth outcomes, and more recently, contribute to the understanding of the genetic underpinnings of disease. Since its inception, thousands of Yale-educated public health alumni have also become leaders in their fields around the world, often in the most challenging settings. Today, these alumni include the likes of Ariane Kirtley, who digs deep bore wells in the arid regions of Niger to provide life-giving water to thousands of people. Jewel Mullen, who leads hundreds of dedicated professionals at Connecticut's Department of Public Health. John Brownstein, who has developed an online map that shows international disease trends and outbreaks. And Nirav Shah, who is CEO and Senior Vice President of Kaiser Permanente in Southern California. It has educated more than 4,000 uh, public health professionals and others who work in this extremely important field. It has been the public health approach that has allowed us to make huge advances in the prevention of disease. From Ebola to obesity, to complex social problems that result in serious health consequences. The Yale School of Public Health is helping to lead the way to healthier lives for all. The school's collaborative approach fosters innovative solutions to pressing health problems around the world. In the field of genomics, Yale School of Public Health researchers are charting the future of medicine and have been leaders in developing genetic epidemiology techniques, such as GWAS. GWAS stands for Genome-Wide Association Studies. 
And it's a technique that's used where you can map a very small segment in the genome that is associated with a particular disease or phenotype that you're interested in. Genome associated studies uh, have really uh, revolutionized the, the medicine in the last uh, 10 years and actually started all here at you know, Yale School of Public Health. Researchers are using this genetic data and applying it to help make improvements in healthcare and health outcomes, including age-related macular degeneration, asthma, and obesity. Just with GWAS in the last few years, we've discovered around 40, 50 genes that are involved in obesity susceptibility. And I think that as we develop newer techniques, as we move forward, maybe we could see uh, making a bigger impact in that field. The human genome is approximately 3 billion base pairs in length. And so it, it's actually a massive undertaking uh, to, to sequence the human genome. My work is extremely collaborative. I don't have a clinical background, and so it really requires bringing large groups of investigators together so that we can get the biological materials that are needed to actually conduct these studies. This has been an incredible group of individuals that are coming together to sort of harness this, these whole genome techniques. The future of genetic medicine is only beginning, and the possibilities for its use in helping to solve health issues are almost limitless. President Obama just made an announcement, this Precision Medicine Initiative, and that's really to link individuals' DNA and other information to better treatment at the individual level. That's really the future of public health. My vision is that we'll be routinely sequencing whole genomes of individuals. So when a child is born, we will know exactly what mutations um, an individual carries early in life. And we can then really think about early interventions. Yale School of Public Health's collaborative approach is also forging the partnerships that are needed to improve health outcomes around the globe. With its international partners, Yale experts are developing, disseminating, and helping to implement research findings that improve healthcare systems in diverse settings. I think when people think of Uganda, they naturally would think of issues like HIV, malaria, tuberculosis, the major infectious diseases, which over the past few years, they've made some great strides. But what they're finding in Uganda, uh, as in other countries, is the rise of non-communicable diseases, things like hypertension, diabetes, cancers. We try to bring people together, uh, Yale faculty and colleagues, to think about and problem solve on these very specific issues. One global health program at Yale, the Global Health Leadership Institute, examines existing healthcare models and brings essential components to different settings to create flexible, efficient, and effective health systems. We modeled it after an institute that existed in Uganda that's um, several years old, which is focused on infectious diseases. So we took that model and we're trying to replicate it for non-communicable diseases. Collaboration's the name of the game in global health. You just can't do it any other way. So unless we can collaborate both within Yale across different departments, but then also with our partners in Uganda, you just get nowhere. At the end of the day, it's not just going to be one particular medical solution that's going to address them, but you're going to need a variety of different groups to be involved. And Yale tries to convene these groups around a model of really leadership and strategic thinking where we can Think of what is the best leverage point? What could we invest in in a country like this that would start the ball rolling towards being able to deal with their most difficult problems? Many other global health initiatives are underway in diverse settings around the world, including China, Israel, South Africa, and Mexico. In Brazil, Dr. Albert Koh and colleagues are working in the favelas to address the threat of leptospirosis, a neglected tropical disease that primarily afflicts the urban poor. Collaborating with community health care workers in some of the most disadvantaged neighborhoods in the United States, Yale researchers are finding community-based solutions and bridging the health care gap to fight chronic diseases. One such program in Hartford, Connecticut, DialBest, is addressing diabetes. Almost 80% of individuals with diabetes live in low and middle income families. So what we decided was to approach the largest uh, community clinic in the city that had a program for Latinos without adequate insurance to deal with their type 2 diabetes. And we persuaded them, why don't we do this 
trial whereby we integrate community health workers as part of your healthcare management team. And in many ways it was visionary because this is precisely what the Affordable Care Act wants to see in terms of understanding much better how to extend that care to the community level. It cannot be done by one organization alone. It really has to be through coalitions of stakeholders, all of which have the common goal of improving the health and well-being of very disenfranchised individuals, those that we have left behind. Yale Public Health researchers are also addressing how to improve patient recovery, quality of life, and chances of survival after treatment for various forms of cancer through programs such as LEAN. My area of research focuses on lifestyle behavioral change interventions, mostly in women diagnosed with breast and ovarian cancer. We know that lifestyle behaviors such as weight and physical activity significantly are associated with developing those cancers, but also associated with um, lowering risk of recurrence and mortality. So we do weight loss trials and exercise trials compared to the care that they're normally receiving with their oncologist. In these women, we observed a marker of inflammation called C-reactive protein, or CRP, and we observed about a 30% decrease in CRP levels with weight loss and exercise. We then want to bring it out into the community or into the clinics. Any men or women diagnosed with cancer are able to come into our clinic and receive two counseling sessions on healthy eating, exercise. Yale's work is shaping cancer treatment and recovery in the 21st century. I would really like to see weight management or an exercise or lifestyle behavioral treatment a part of the treatment plan. Other scientists at the School of Public Health are fundamentally shaping the growing field of disease modeling and how this mathematical technique can be used to predict disease transmission and inform public health interventions for maximum benefit. At the Center for Infectious Disease Modeling Analysis, we focus on evaluating and designing effective strategies to address public health challenges. Mathematical modeling is simply the use of mathematical and computational to develop a model for predictions or the understanding of disease transmission. We're particularly interested in research that has the potential to improve public health policy, either domestically or globally. So during the unprecedentedly devastating uh, 2014 to 2015 Ebola outbreak, members of our SIDMA team traveled to Liberia to work closely with the ministry and we developed an app that helped to facilitate their community efforts that were fundamental to curtailing transmission. And so while we were in Liberia, our primary focus was working with community-based efforts to improve the quality of the data that was being um, retrieved from their efforts and also make it more efficient for that data to be transmitted to decision makers. The Yale School of Public Health is a leader in disease modeling, an approach with widespread promise and potential for public health. Scientists such as Ted Cohen, Virginia Pitzer, Forrest Crawford, and a host of others further enhance the school's growing capabilities. We first start by putting together a multidisciplinary team, medical professional, epidemiologists, applied mathematicians, statisticians, to tackle the problem so that we can develop a model that is robust enough and that is usable enough to be able to inform with a high degree of confidence policymaking. The effect of the environment on health is enormous, and Yale public health researchers are combining cutting edge scientific techniques with traditional epidemiology to understand how human exposure to chemicals in the environment influence health outcomes. Also of growing concern is how fundamental changes to the environment itself in the form of warmer temperatures, for instance, will impact communities across the globe in the coming decades. My laboratory is uh, focused on studying uh, cellular responses to 
uh, environmental stressors. And those environmental stressors could be from the UV light, which is increased exposure due to the climate changes, and how this could affect uh, your skin, your eyes. So in addition, we're looking at various diseases that can be uh, caused by environmental uh, conditions. And those include diabetes and also uh, heart disease. My vision for the department is that we use systems biology approaches. So we combine the epidemiology along with genomic approaches, metabolomic approaches, and also the toxicology in our field. I collaborate with all people all over the world just to get to the correct answers for the population. So public health will play maybe the most important role of bringing all the sciences together in terms of predicting and preventing toxicity and disease to population in households, yards, and work environments, and in many of the products that people regularly use, potential toxic chemicals with serious health consequences are known to exist. There's a lot of opportunity to prevent or mitigate or reduce exposures to try to advance public health. So I'm leading an analysis to look at the combined exposure to over 50 of these different chemicals. And in my work, I collaborate with top-notch epidemiologists, statisticians, chemists, to really enhance the quality and impact of my research. Getting accurate and precise exposure measurements is critical. Can we disentangle this mixture and determine which chemicals are the bad actors? And that has implications for regulations, exposure reduction, and human health. I think the future of public health is wonderfully encompassing, whether it's in nursing or in medicine or any of these things. We really need fine scholarship and the will to collaborate with people outside of our own special area of study. And you see that in public health. You do really see that in public health. You, you can't neglect the community and expect the community to thrive. So it's not just about providing medicines, it's also about building models of care, it's also about engaging with health systems, it's also about identifying where the structural barriers are that you need to address. So these are all sets of skills that you pick up from a public health education that you take with you. So yes, you know, Yale School of Public Health did prepare me to be a humanitarian uh, health worker. I mean, it changed the way I looked at things. You know, I came from a very narrow view of what health was and, um, you know, uh, the determinants of health. Very narrow view and I left with a much broader view. We have increasing number of students who want to learn about health issues that not just only affect them, but citizens across the globe. So I think the new vision that our school has is to educate our students, um, not just by giving them the information, but by providing them with the skill set they need to do problem solving, to be true leaders, and be able to address whatever happens to come up in the next decades to come. So we are talking about critical thinking, problem solving, communication, advocacy, the kinds of tools that are needed to solve problems. I'm especially in marginalized populations, so I am really trying to figure out strategies to sort of get HIV rates down in specific populations in the United States and abroad. Being from Mississippi, I really want to go back to the South and work in obesity research and help to make that whole population a healthier population. I think one of the most important things that I've gained from YSPH is really a community, a community of fellow researchers, my colleagues, the students that I go to school with. And this network really is something that I truly value because not only have I learned knowledge, but I've learned to see various issues in a new light, just given the experiences and the backgrounds of the students and professors that I've worked in. I don't feel like I can't approach uh, senior faculty members or that faculty don't know what's going on with the students. Uh, everyone is incredibly involved and that is something that I, that I really love. I have alumni mentors who look over my resume and email me when they have an article they think that I would be interested in. People who are top of their field and they want to talk to me, they want to help me, they want to get me started. OISPH has been really good to me. You know, there's a lot of talk about Ivy Lees being very pretentious and cutthroat, and I never felt like that at all at YSPH. 
In fact, they felt quite the opposite. There's a lot of collaboration. People are really nice and approachable. Today, some 4,500 School of Public Health alumni are also at work on pressing health challenges in more than 70 countries around the globe. By putting their training to use in a variety of capacities, whether in research, academics, government, administration, or private nonprofits, our alumni play a crucial role in improving public health. It's a field where the different disciplinary perspectives come together and produce something individuals in those disciplines might not have discovered on their own. In that sense, I think it is uh, very much a uh, part of the way I envision Yale's future. The contributions of some of these major figures in the previous century, it really saw medicine as being a part of public health. And once we get our head around that, uh, I think things will change in a way which will allow us to make progress that we need to make. While there have been numerous successes and advances over the past century, the field of public health remains as vital and as challenging as ever. New diseases are emerging. The world is marked by health inequity. Adult and childhood obesity are epidemic. Diseases are spreading beyond their traditional borders. Infant mortality rates in many parts of the world remain unacceptably high, and a changing climate is likely to usher in a host of health challenges that will disproportionately affect the poor. The Yale School of Public Health, through its expert faculty, dedicated students, accomplished alumni, and long-standing collaborative partnerships is poised to address these and other serious problems as it embarks on its second century and continues its work to create a healthier future for all. In Winslow's view, good health and long life were everyone's birthright. When I go through the building at 60 College Street and I meet the students, and to look at the enthusiasm and the talent and the dedication, uh, it, it leaves me with an incredible sense of optimism. And uh, there's so many smart people who are so dedicated and working so hard, we can't possibly not have a better future ahead of us. <laughs>